Welcome to Policy On Demand. I'm Scott McCandless. It is the week of August 19th, and this is your Monday briefing. Election Watch will air later this week with Roe Hitt and Janice, but today, the Democratic National Convention begins in Chicago, and joining me to discuss what to expect from the convention is Todd Metcalf. Todd, welcome. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me, Scott. So I think we're all pretty clear on who the nominee that will be put forth, how, how well, that's going to work out. We hope. <laughs> that seems to have been worked out. But what else might we expect from the convention this week? Well, I mean, I think we'll, we'll expect the same thing we see at all the conventions. We're going to lots and lots of platitudes and platform discussions. And uh, undoubtedly, there'll be a balloon drop because that seems to be required by the Constitution at this <laughs> point. Throughout the week, they will be focusing on various themes. We will be seeing sort of the Mount Rushmore of Democratic politicians appearing uh, tonight. President Biden and Dr. Biden uh, will appear after former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton uh, tomorrow night uh, will be the Obama's night, uh, and and I think uh, Doug Imhoff, uh, uh, Vice President Harris's husband, will speak on uh, Wednesday night. We'll have Tim Walls, the vice presidential nominee, who will follow Bill Clinton. Mm -hmm. uh, hopefully his speech is shorter than his 1988 speech, where, of course, you may remember the great applause line was, and in conclusion, and that was the most appropriate thing. Um, and then on Wednesday night, It'll be all about Vice President Harris, I think. Um, and, you know, in between, I'm sure every cabinet secretary and every the governor of Illinois and whoever else will all all find speaking times. But we're just going to you know, it's going to be, you know, they're trying to continue the momentum sure. that they have uh, about, you know, being joyful warriors on the campaign <laughs> and looking to the future and not the past, et cetera, et cetera. Sure. So I would expect that that's what we're going to see sure. um, again with this sort of parade of notables uh, speaking every night uh, leading through th until Thursday. So we know there's quite a bit of political drama out there, but rather focusing the attention away from the drama itself to companies. What are companies looking at or where should their attention be focused? I mean, look, companies have been have been sort of consistently looking, I think, in you know, August Congress is gone. So as as one of my former bosses used to say, Congress is in recess, America is safe for the moment. Um, you know, I so I think they're they're focused maybe a little less on Congress than they than they might normally be. They're but they are still looking at looking to Treasury, looking to the IRS. There's still a lot of guidance outstanding uh, for things related to the IRA and other in other areas that keeps getting promised, but not quite delivered. So they're, they're watching those things. Unlike normal August, there is some attention being paid to Congress because we've seen the Ways and Means Committee, for example, particularly on the Republican side, uh, having their, their sort of uh, TCJA teams meetings in, in uh, Atlanta and other places around the country, sort of focusing on the big tax uh, dilemma next year. Um, and then, of course, the, the whole committee had a hearing uh, at the Iowa State Fair. That must have been great. Um, but, you know, so I think that, you know, they're, they're watching those things. They're trying to figure out um, what's happening. They want to know, is anything going to happen in Congress this year? Um, but of course, I think, you know, the likelihood, it's not impossible, but it doesn't look like there's a high likelihood that we're going to see something. So companies are really focused on those things. But the other thing that they have been focused on, and I think that the convention may, you know, give them some further evidence of is like, what would a Harris Walls administration look like? What would those tax policies or other policies that might affect business, what will they be looking at? And maybe, you know, we saw some economic policy revealed last Friday. Maybe we'll see some more policy revealed this week. Uh, so I think that companies will be paying attention to that as well. Sure. You mentioned some of the things that are still outstanding. One, of course, is the uh, seemingly dead tax extenders bill. But whether it's fate, does it still have any potential life, perhaps in a lame duck session? Or what might we see become of it? The likelihood that the Wyden-Smith agreement, as we saw pass the House in January, getting through the Congress, I think that's almost a nullity. Mm -hmm. um, but I do think that there, there remains some possibility in a lame duck session, however limited, I think, that maybe they come to some agreement with no retroactivity on the child tax credit or some, you know, make some other changes that, uh, that make it look different than the, than the prior deal. So I think that there's still some chance uh, of, getting, of getting something done before the end of the year. Going back to the former question, companies 
do have some understanding, I think, because people have, you know, people have talked to them about like the importance of maybe some of these provisions like 174, 163J, et cetera, being in the baseline going into 2025 so that that discussion, that could alter the discussion of, well, do we have 174 after 2025? Mm -hmm. Um, So, you know, I think that there's some possibility, but I wouldn't be banking a lot of, you know, hope that that we're going to see that get done before the end of the year. And then finally, Todd, what other things are on Congress's plate? Anything that's in the must-do category with very few remaining legislative days? Yeah, I mean, look, the, the one thing that Congress has to get done is keeping the government open. Sure. They're out in August. They'll come back uh, in sort of the second week of September, I guess. Uh, after Labor Day, they will, you know, have a th- few weeks to sort of figure out, OK, how are we going to keep the government running? Are we going to pass appropriations bills? Are we going to have a CR? I think we, we all, we, you and I know that they're not likely to pass appropriations bills. So we're going to see a continued resolution. How long are we going to have a normal continued resolution as we've traditionally had that sort of a, a single date in December or November or something for them to try to work something out before the end of the year? Or are we going to have this sort of what we saw this spring, which is sort of those dual dates, like, well, one before Thanksgiving, one right after Thanksgiving and, and have that kind of two crises a week yeah. kind of situation. Um, so I think we'll see a CR of some kind. I know that like uh, Chairman Wyden has, is planning to have a hearing in September uh, on uh, or likely on high income individuals and their tax strategies, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but, but beyond hearings and further conversations about, I think, 2025, which we're seeing on both sides of the Capitol and on both sides of the aisle, I think I wouldn't expect a lot. But certainly on the tax front. On the spending front, again, they've got to they have to fund the government and then they're gonna leave and campaign. Makes sense. Like you said, hopefully that keeps us somewhat safe. Exactly. It's <laughs> great. Well, Todd, thank you so much for your insights today. Very much appreciate you being with us. Absolutely. Thank you, Scott. Thank you. And a programming note for our viewers before we go, join us again at the end of the week for another episode of Election Watch. And included in the description of this episode, you'll find two special episodes on investor engagement and Gen AI. You'll also find a link to register for the next tax readiness webcast focused on tariffs and company supply chain. That webcast happens this Thursday. Thank you very much for joining us. Have a great week. Take care.